Hi, besties and builders. Yvonne here, AKA Vogue Brunette. And today we're crafting the shoes of my dreams. If designer shoes existed for my avatar, this would be it. In this video, we're taking my inspo board, my sanity and blender, and we're stitching together the cutest, not so basic shoes. And yes, before you even ask, we need to talk about our little secret weapon for this tutorial. I'm using Roblox's new avatar auto setup tool, which lets me skip that whole rigging and caging manually. No, thank you. Auto setup does all the heavy lifting for us. It automatically adds the rigging and caging so I can focus on the fun stuff, modeling, shaping, and giving these boots their whole identity. Of course, it wasn't all smooth sailing. We encountered a few little hurdles along the way and I'll guide you through navigating those with grace and ease. This tool is brand new and constantly getting updates. So some of these steps might evolve or even disappear in the future, but I'll walk you through exactly what I did to get these boots marketplace ready. So let's jump right in. You're gonna need Roblox Studio, Roblox reference mannequins downloaded, links in the description, Blender for 3D modeling, Photoshop for texturing, time and patience. Oh, and if you want to upload your assets to the marketplace to sell, you'll need Robux for an upload fee and Robux for a publishing advance. But I recommend you practice and create a few assets before you try to sell them. Check out the description for more info on learning how to sell your creations. If you're feeling a bit overwhelmed by shoes, no stress. Check out my previous videos where I go from complete newbie to semi not newbie. There's a whole series where I've got expert feedback. And if you're curious about the old school manual rigging and caging process, I've got just the video covering that too. Everything will be in the description. All right, besties, before we even touch a cylinder or a loop cut, here's the game plan for this whole modeling section. So you're not like, girl, what are we doing? <laughs> in this part, we're going to pull up our inspo and get it inside of Blender. Add our base shape, AKA a cylinder, Spend 70 to 90% of our time shaping that cylinder into the boot. Use blender tools like moving vertices, extruding, scaling, and loop cuts. Also modeling takes time, like real time, like hours of time. Over the course of this video, I made multiple versions of these boots, cried over half of them and restarted more than I'd like to admit. So don't feel bad if your first try looks like a sock. We've all been there, including me. Before we dive into blending, here are the basics. You're gonna see me spam throughout the modeling process. We have object mode versus edit mode. Object mode is moving the whole shoe around. Edit mode is poking and dragging the actual geometry. If Blender ever won't let you do something, you're probably in the wrong mode. Trust me, it happens. E or extruding, which is my ride or die. Think of it like pulling clay outward. This is how we grow the toe box, the shaft, and basically anything that needs extra shape. When I say eye in setting, it's perfect for making clean edges or little lips in the design. You'll see me use this when I need controlled detail without weird geometry chaos. S is for scaling, use constantly. It helps you blow things up or slim things down or taper shapes evenly. Loop cuts or control in R is the secret to clean detailing. Add these when you need more control points to sculpt with. But be mindful, more cuts is more triangles. And Z is wireframe, lets you grab inner vertices you can't see. I flip into this all the time while shaping around the mannequin. That's the basics. Now let's finally get started by bringing in our inspo image. In object mode, go to add image background and import your reference image. This won't affect your model, it's literally just your guide. For a quick rotation fix, hit Option and R, then R, X, and 90. On the right panel, click your Scene Collection file box. Rename your reference image to Inspo. Keep things tidy so you don't cry later when you need to find something. We can hide it for now by pressing the I button, the Scene Selection, on the right panel. Next, we're starting with a basic shape. Anytime you start a project, you want to grab whatever shape looks the most similar to your Inspo. And and for these boots, it's a cylinder. In object mode, go to add mesh cylinder. The cylinder is going to be the base shape of our boot. Cylinders are perfect for round uniform shapes like calves and most legs. Super important, change your vertices to eight so we can save on triangles. Remember, each shoe can only have 4,000 triangles if we want to upload it to Roblox. So every little triangle matters. If you want to check your stats, click on viewport overlays, toggle on statistics, and you'll see everything appear in the top left corner. And if you ever need to double check Roblox's triangle limits or any other UGC requirements, I linked all of that in the description. Back to the cylinder. The little pop-up on the bottom left where you adjust vertices and settings only appears once. The second you click away, it disappears. Don't panic though, if that happens, you can always just add a new cylinder and start again. And once you've got your cylinder set up the way you want, you're ready to start shaping it into an actual boot. 
Select two faces along the y-axis. Press E and Y to extrude along the y-axis. This creates the toe box for our boots. Select the top face. Press E and Z to extrude along the z-axis. This is going to create the shaft for our boots. You've now got your basic boot shape. And honestly, this works perfectly for most people, but we're not most people, are we? We care about the details. So let's get into the nitty gritty and make this look intentional and actually fashionable. Now we're going to select loop cut, create as many cuts as you see fit for your design. This lets us add clean slices into the boot so we can shape it with way more precision. Think of it as giving yourself extra seams to sculpt the details exactly how you want them. There's honestly no right or wrong way to do this. It's your art, so enjoy the process. Just keep in mind, the more cuts you make, the more triangles you add, the more difficult it might be to UV unwrap and texture later, and you might go over your 4K vertices limit. So balance creativity with those limits when you're designing. Keep in mind that a clean, evenly spaced checkerboard pattern is way easier to work with. So try to avoid any weird or funky cuts that might mess up your flow. Simple and neat wins every time. Make sure to rename your cylinder to left or right. This is important because Blender relies heavily on clear naming for managing objects, especially especially when working with multiple parts or references, and avoids accidental edits to the wrong item. Plus, when you come back later or share your file, you'll thank yourself for keeping it tidy. In edit mode, switch to wireframe view so you can select inner vertices easily. Switch to vertex select. You can do this by clicking the box at the top left bar next to edit mode or by pressing one on your keyboard. We're going to move vertices around to match the inspo while keeping that checkerboard pattern intact. Use G to grab or move, S to scale, and E to extrude your way there. You might even need to add some extra loop cuts to get the shape just right. Ta-da! After hours of work, we've got a shoe that's anything but basic. Now, onto the good stuff. It's UV time! Basically how you tell Blender where your texture goes. Think of it like flattening your 3D object, kind of like laying out fabric before you sew. Once we create the pattern of how we lay the object out, we'll export the pattern into Photoshop to create the texture. Switch over to the UV editing panel. On the right, select your object and press A to select everything. Then hit U smart UV project, and unwrap. You'll see your flat mesh pop up on the left. That's your texture map. You can move pieces around depending on what color or texture you want on each part. When you're done, export your UV layout as a PNG with fill opacity set at zero. And seriously, make sure your mesh is finalized before UV unwrapping, because if you make changes to your model after unwrapping, you'll have to redo the whole UV process. It's a total time suck and honestly a major headache. So save yourself the tears and get your shape locked in first. All right, now that we've exported the map showing the surface of our 3D piece, it's officially texture time. We're basically going to take that UV layout, drag it into Photoshop, and start creating the actual artwork that will wrap around our boot. Think of this section as UV layout, Photoshop, back to Blender, repeat until imperfectly perfect, using those UV islands as a guide and creating the image that will become our texture. This part can be a little tricky because it's totally normal to bounce between Photoshop and Blender a few times. Adjust again until everything lines up the way you want it. You can either paint everything by hand or layer images like I usually do, just adding shading and highlighting. Make sure to stay organized with folders. Every change gets its own layer. And super important, before you export as a PNG, hide the UV layout layer, or else you'll end up with black outlines on your model. Trust me, you don't want that. Keep your file within 1024 by 1024 resolution because Roblox Studio will not take large textures. Now that we have our texture image, PNG, let's pop it into Blender to see how it looks. To do this, in Blender, select your shoes object. Object has to be selected or you'll modify the wrong object, AKA you won't see the graph nodes. Navigate to the shading tab, press shift and A, add an image texture. In the new image texture node, click the folder sign to import your image texture. Connect the color port to the base color port of your object. Switch to material preview mode, Z, to see your texture in Blender. Okay, real talk, a flat texture only gets you so far. To get those real fabric folds, stitches, and depth that make the boots pop, we need a normal map. Think of a normal map like a fake 3D effect painted onto your surface. It tricks the light into reacting as if there are bumps and grooves without actually adding more geometry, which saves your triangle count. Here's the quick and honest rundown of how I made my normal map, because yes, this part sounds scary, but it's actually kind of fun. 
After I finished my base texture in Photoshop, I popped it into a normal map generator. There are a ton of free options, but my fave and the one I'll link in the description is this one. The tool converts those light and dark details into RGB values that Blender reads as surface bumps. Play with the strength level and sharpness sliders. If it looks inside out, hit invert. Then back in Blender, go to shading tab, add, vector, normal map node, duplicate your image texture node. Then I imported the normal map texture back into Blender shading tab, add, vector, normal map. Plug color to color and alpha to strength because Blender needs the map decoded first. Insert the normal map we just made. Switch the color space to non-color. Switch to material preview to check the light bounce. Boom, instant depth. It can be a bit trial and error, adjusting the strength and details until it looks just right. But trust me, this step takes your boots from meh to I need those. If everything looks good, like seriously good, then go ahead and export both shoes together. Easy. But if not, don't stress at all. Jump back into Photoshop and Blender and keep adjusting until it's exactly how you want it. Then export the file. You can hit File, Export as FBX or GLTF. Big bonus, FBX or GLTF will automatically package textures so you won't have to do this later. In this case, let's export an FBX with the following settings to make sure we're embedding our textures. That's it. Just make sure to save your file somewhere safe. All that's left is getting our shoes into Studio. First, we're importing the model. In Studio, go to File, Import 3D, and select your FBX file. You should see your textures pop up automatically in the preview. If they don't, no stress, you can add them manually later too. If everything looks good, hit import. It might take a few seconds, but your shoes should show up in the workspace eventually. We need to separate the shoes into two individual models. Copy and paste the original pair in the workspace so you have a duplicate to work with. Right click and rename left shoe and the other right shoe. Right click and rename left shoe accessory. On each model, delete the opposite shoe and the other and rename right shoe accessory. And yes, you have to use this exact spelling and wording, no shortcuts or creative twists. Then double check that both shoes are aligned and sitting in the correct position. You can compare them against your avatar to make sure nothing is clipping. All right, like I said earlier, we're letting Roblox's Studio automatic rigging and caging tool do the heavy lifting for us. But since it's still pretty new, it can be a little dramatic. So if your shoes start acting unhinged, don't panic. You didn't do anything wrong. A little trial and error is literally part of the process, bestie. Okay, so we already handled some of the prep work when we imported our boots. But now it's time for the auto setup portion of the journey. Here's what you need to know for shoes specifically. First, you have to include a character body to act as your mannequin. Roblox is working on ditching the steps soon, but for now your shoes won't play nice without a body to stand on. If you used your own avatar character to model your shoes, head to avatar, rig builder, and import your current avatar. If you used a different character, import that into studio either using the 3D import tool or using a third party add-on to import the character. Make sure to move your left and right shoes so they fit perfectly on your character's feet. Think of it like putting your boots on your avatar. Next, bundle your shoes and that mannequin together inside a folder. This tells Auto Setup, hey, these belong together. Don't skip this or you'll be crying in the studio. Then Auto Setup kicks in and does its magic. But heads up, it takes a hot minute and will straight up tell you if something's wonky. Spoiler alert, I definitely had to do some serious trial and error to get mine just right. Oh, and here's a pro move we haven't talked about yet. After auto setup finishes, you can export the output as a GLTF file, open it up in Blender, tweak any rigging or caging weirdness, then bring it back into Studio to make your boots chef's kiss perfect. If your Roblox Studio looks like this, amazing. Auto setup is recognizing your avatar and we can breathe for two seconds. If it doesn't, just follow the setup steps and get your avatar sorted first. Otherwise you're going to glitch out and you're going to wonder why the universe hates you. All right, then to test it out in an experience, hit the test and experience button. If you have the character and shoes selected while in auto setup, if it looks good and you're vibing with it, you're golden. If you're interested in uploading them to the marketplace, check out the links in the description. And that's a wrap, besties and builders. We went from a simple cylinder to some seriously not basic boots, tackled Blender's quirks, survived the wild ride of auto setup, and got these babies marketplace ready. While well, auto setup saved me from spending 47 years rigging and caging, keep in mind that it's still an early feature and Roblox is continually updating the tool. If you do run into any issues, open a bug report using the link in the description and help improve the tool. Remember, this process isn't a sprint, it's a messy, glorious, marathon filled with trial and error. 
But trust me, every little tweak gets you closer to those perfect creations. Hit that like button, subscribe, and drop a comment with what you want to make next or what part totally wrecked you. And don't forget to share your creations. I want to see all of you glow up in the UGC game. Until next time, stay fabulous, stay chaotic, and keep building those dreams one vertex at a time. For now, you can binge these other UGC toots. Happy building!